everybody. Today we are going to talk about the Precambrian. The Precambrian is the last chapter before the midterm, so this here is going to be part of your midterms. You really have to study it. Um, this chapter actually starts the second part of the semester where we're talking about the different time periods and what has happened during those time periods. So obviously we're going to start at the beginning, which is the Precambrian. Basically, uh, this part of the Earth history and the Precambrian as a word is referring both rocks and times. Um, as a geologic term, it will include the geologic time from the formation of the Earth all the way, all the way to the beginning of the Phanerozoic. Remember, the first period of the Phanerozoic is the Cambrian. So we're talking about here anything which is before. That's why they call it Precambrian. Uh, so, if you think about 4.6 billion years old Earth and the Phenerozoic is at 540, it's basically about 4.06 billion years, years of Earth history belongs to the Precambrian. So, if you think of one day, which is 24 hours, basically 21 hours of the 24-hour day is missing. It's in this... Precambrian rocks, which are extremely um, low preserved, uh, I mean, low amount of rocks are preserved, and even these rocks are very, very metamorphosed. You cannot use the geologic uh, principles because everything is so messed up. Like, there has been so many Wilson cycle. If you think about 4.1 billion, if you take a Wilson cycle being about 300 million, it's about 7, 8 complete uh, supercontinent cycle went through. So you can imagine how much changes happened with this uh, few rocks which preserved from this time. So the rel relative timing, which is very important if you think about it, is, is basically impossible. We, we have very few fossils present, so the correlation is extremely hard also. So you understand there is a whole lot of big problems with uh, interpreting the Precambrian time period. Here you just can't see this figure which shows you the the basically the the Precambrian which is all the blue and the Precambrian is divided into the Archean this is the Archean and the Proterozoic and of course, right before the Hadean, which is like before the Earth become a planet, basically. And as you can clearly see, this here represents the 540, which is the beginning of the Phanerozoic. And the, the very last 66 million years is just this low area. That's the Cenozoic right here. So as you can see, most of the, the geologic time is basically missing without information. So when the Earth actually, we can say, formed as a planet um, or accreted, uh, shortly after that, it was actually rapidly rotating. It was hot and barren. It didn't have any water. And there was a lot of uh, bombardment, meteorite bombardment by comets and, and um, meteorites from asteroids. And there was no continents. And because we didn't have atmosphere, we didn't have a um, magnetic field, there was very, very intense cosmic radiation. And the only thing we think has happened during this time was very, very wide, widespread volcanisms. So we're going to start with the Hadean, which didn't even show up on that time um, on that time pie chart because uh, the Hadean is the pre-geologic history. So basically it begins with the origin of the earth and ends with the oldest rock, which is about 3.9 billion years old. Um, and and of course the, the earth is older than that. And uh, we have meteorites uh, which are dating back to 4.5 to 6 billion years ago. And we believe that the meteorites have the same origin as Earth and they have the same composition as Earth. Uh, we have three kinds of meteorites and that's an easy thing to know, so you should know it because I will ask it on the midterm. Um, 
we have the so-called iron meteorite, and those are the ones which represent the composition of the Earth core. We have the stone meteorites, uh, which represent the crustal composition, and then finally the iron stone meteorites, which represent the composition of the mantle. Uh, there is a lot of little bit of um, meteorite statistics. Most of the meteorite which uh, comes to Earth actually is a stony meteorite, about 95%. And um, it might be a little bit different on, on the slides itself because I, I guess I collected my data from different places. The stony iron is pretty rare and the iron is about 4% of all the meteorites. So let's go through them. Before we do, uh, there is a very good example of a meteorite crater um, in Arizona, actually, and it's a good place because it's very dry climate, so it cannot actually fade away by weathering. So this here is a little bit of a, a, a small asteroid hit the Earth, and um, it is very close to Winslow, Arizona, and it happened about 50,000 years ago. And we do know that it actually was hit by an iron meteorite, and it was about 30 to 50 meter in diameter. And this crater, the Beringer crater, is about 1,200 meter. It's about uh, 4,000 feet in diameter, and it's about 200 meter deep. So it's pretty deep. Actually, I did, I go there, I went there. You can go there and you can actually climb down into the craters. It's a, it's a really great um excursion i should say it's really fun to go there and, and see it it's pretty hard though so you have to be careful now what really is interesting and uh the crater is named after behringer who used to who was a geologist before he died and um when he learned that it must have been a meteorite crater <coughs> meteorite crater he believed that he could possibly <coughs> I'm sorry. Start an iron mine because it was hit by uh, iron. And he spent a lot of money on drilling and trying to find the iron meteorite he thought was there. But after $600,000, it turned out that there was no any iron. And other geologists figured out that it actually evaporated on impact. So... Uh, the only thing which is there is a couple of meteorite pieces and a lot of tectites. Tectites are forming from melting the rocks as the meteorite impacts on Earth. So now let's go through the different types of meteorites, starting with the iron meteorites. The iron meteorites are composed largely of iron and nickel, so it's really, really similar to the core of the Earth. And... Um, Actually, most of it is iron, and these white lines are the nickels. And they, uh, they uh, include very minor other minerals. They, resum they basically are exactly the same as the, as the core of the earth. Uh, and it's very similar in structure to some of the other uh, asteroids. About 4% of all the meteorites are iron meteorites. The next one is the iron stone meteorite. These guys are a mixture of iron nickel alloy, just like the, the iron meteorite, but also they have non-metallic mineral matter, basically olivine. And uh, about 1.5% of all the meteorites are uh, iron stone meteorite, and they represent the the mantle of the earth and then the last type is the so-called stone meteorite we have three kinds of stone meteorites we have the so-called chondrites the chondrites are the most common they are 85.7 percent of all meteorites uh, they they have these very characteristic chondrules these are small spheres uh, which used to be melted minerals and then they have uh, solidified the contracts are believed to be among the oldest rocks in the whole solar system. And they actually represent the mantle uh, and the crust of the earth, the composition of the mantle and the crust. Then we have the so-called carbonaceous contracts. These guys are really, 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 really rare. Now, why are they so important? Because they actually contain carbon. 
So these uh, carbonaceous chondrites have the element carbon in them. And a lot of people think that life has started on Earth from carbon, which was brought in by a meteorite. So therefore, they are very, very important. And the last type is the so-called achondrite. These guys are stony meteorites without the chondrules. And it's about 7.1% of all the meteorites. Uh, some of the geologists believe that these meteorites possibly coming from the moon or the Mars. The way the 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 way they find these meteorites and they look at how, what kind of angle could it hit the Earth if it's coming from the Moon or the on the Mars, that's how they map the location of the meteorites and that's how they figure out where the meteorite might have came from. Um, so just about every meteorite have low um, spherical inclusions than that formed during the solar nebula so there is really no any meteorite um, any stony meteorite without controls but but there are some which has less than than the other one so the contrite meteorites have a lot of controls and you can see it right uh, you can see it right here on the next slide this is the contrite and you can see the controls right here so these low uh, P-like structures. This here is the carbonaceous chondrite, and this white area to, uh, contains the carbon, which is kind of important. And this one is a typical achondrite, achondrite. So that's the one which doesn't have the chondrites. So it does have the low gas lights or something, but they don't have the chondrules. So now let's talk just a little bit about the, the Earth origin. Most likely Earth formed uh, by the solar nebula at the same time with the other planets. And the evidence for that is that they all are uh, revolving around the sun on the same plane. And um, most likely the Earth later was heated up by radioactive decay and uh, it became completely molten. And when something is molten, what happens with the heaviest elements? You're right, they sink into the, the middle. So therefore, by this uh, process, the earth becomes zoned. You know, the inner core, which is ironical, the, the liquid outer core, the mantle, and the crust, which is the lightest. Um, so because of the outer core is still liquid, that's why earth has a magnetic field. At the very beginning of the formation of the Earth, mantle basically was on the surface. Uh, the mantle, as we know, we learned it in physical geology, has an ultramafic composition. If you haven't had physical geology, ultramafic means that it has very, very low, less than 35% SiO2 content. So it will only include uh, silicate minerals, which are um, like olive in very simple structure. Um, and as the Earth has started to cool down, it most likely has happened because of the mental convection. Whatever was on the surface was cooler, and whatever was underneath was warmer. Uh, now, as soon as the, this material, which cooled down some, have started to melt partially, uh, the earliest crust have started to form, which most likely was basaltic and later andesitic in composition. Now, when I say basaltic or andesitic, that means that that uh, it's intermediate and which is the and and andesitic and uh, mafic in composition. Mafic means the silica content, the SiO two content is between thirty five to forty five percent, and the intermediate has about forty five to sixty percent. So they become um, more and more silica rich, and they become more and more. Uh, complex structure. So we do know for a fact that about 3.8 billion years ago we did have some crust which existed on Earth. Um, and we believe that this earliest crust, uh, crust continental crust, sorry, uh, formed from partial melting from the earliest oceanic crust 
and the sediments at the ocean ocean convergent plate boundaries uh, formed from these areas. So therefore, their composition had to be mafic ultramafic, and the sediment which came from these rocks had to contain the minerals which were also mafic ultramafic in composition. So we do know, we do know for a fact that by the end of the Hadean, we did have some substantial continental blocks on Earth. The oldest known rocks really are uh, coming from from Australia and they did form, did find it at Jacks Hills uh, which is about 800 kilometer north of Perth. Perth is about here, no Jack Hills. Perth is about here and Jack Hills are right here. So this is the Jack Hill area right here. Um, and in these rocks, this is called sandstone actually or conglomerate. In these rocks, uh, geologists could find tiny zircon crystals and the test showed that about 10% uh, of these crystals were more than 4 billion years old. 10% of these uh, crystals were more than 4 billion years old. So these are the oldest, oldest measured um, rock pieces basically. I always pull it high up, sorry. And, and this picture shows you the zircon crystals and um, this is under cathodal luminescence microscope and you can see the zonation of this crystal. So the original mineral grew in the igneous rock because see this is sedimentary rock. So it had to start as an igneous rock and this was the core of the zircon crystal and this was growth rims. Uh, which grew later in the sedimentary environment and they measured the 4 billion actually right here. So that just means that it had to be older than that actually. Because if you think about the, the zones on the core are growing later in time in the sedimentary environment. We do know that at the end of the Hadean, um, Earth, just like all the other planets, have been bombarded with meteorites. The heaviest bombardment about ended about 3.8 billion years ago, and we believe that this is the end of the Hadean, which is the pre-geologic time. And now we're gonna move into the Archean. Uh, so I'm gonna stop the first segment right here, and then I will start the second one, the Archean, in a minute. Okay, I'll see ya.